in a sector that has not yet been reflected yet in the value of these companies. So first off, I want to do a little bit of a year review. Since we had the historic March 29th and the March CARES Act that was signed in, stimulus checks that were sent out uh, after the coronavirus crash. And if you notice here, um, in April, May, June, July, we saw a major rally into, uh, into gold and silver. Uh, silver was up almost 100% from the lows. Uh, gold was up 25% uh, from that, that low. Uh, and yields went, went down to, to hit a low uh, here in August. But since August, we've seen yields on the treasuries rising. So there's been a reflation trade. Uh, since August, uh, that has pressured gold. If you notice here in August, we've seen gold going down, bonds going higher, but in the metal space, look what's happened. Copper has continued on. And now since the, the March 29th CARES Act low, uh, copper's up almost 72%, uh, 73%. Uh, Silver's up 84.5%. Uh, gold is only up 11%. And the treasury yields are, are moving higher. So until we start seeing the yields peak out, um, and they're going to try to keep this down, these yields down, because the more this goes up, the more it puts pressure on the, uh, the real estate market and the uh, interest rate sensitive. Uh, markets that need, you know, that that have to, that, that are in debt. So uh, this, until this starts peaking out, uh, gold is going to be still in consolidation mode, and uh, and that's what we're kind of seeing right now in many of our stocks. Um, but since this summer, when gold was doing pretty well. We said, look at the reflation trade, look at copper, silver, base metals. That's outperformed uh, in the past few months. But we still think that gold, which has been correcting now for almost now seven months, um, could be ready to make a double bottom here, could be on the verge of the next leg higher, uh, especially if we see continued lockdowns, continued domestic travel bans. Now they're speaking about domestic travel bans, so, you know, not allowing travel to certain states. So we'll see what happens. But right now, the past seven months, yields have been rising. Uh, and that's put some pressure on gold. The money's gone back in reflation to copper and silver. That's the past six months. We'll see how long this lasts. Uh, but right now, uh, copper and silver uh, have been performing better than, than gold. I'd like to go over a few junior miners that have come out with very, very good drill results, both in gold and silver, that have been pretty much ignored because of uh, the consolidation and correction in gold over the past uh, seven months and the consolidation in silver from the highs that were hit this past summer. The first one is Viscount Mining. Viscount is, can be traded as VML on the TSX Venture. It also can tr be traded as VLMGF. And Viscount uh, drilled, put out results at the end of uh, January. Uh, and you can see the results here of silver here. 6.1 meters, 1,769 grams per ton silver. 6.1 meters of almost 757.3 grams per ton silver. This could be uh, the next big U.S. silver producing mine because this has already been studied by some of the majors before. Uh, and now they're continuing to hit incredible results uh, out of the, the Cape East area. Uh, and the market has pretty much uh, not recognized it yet. But smart investors are, and 
they also, on their Nevada property, they signed a deal with Centera, that gold with $5 billion producer, gold producer, to explore $8 million on their Nevada project. So they're looking to invest in Nevada. They've chosen Viscount, but the market has ignored this. So please put this on your radar, VML on the TSX Venture, also VLMGF on the US OTC. Over 60% of the shares are held by insiders, very, very tightly held. And uh, there's gonna be more drilling here, a lot more news to come with Viscount Mining, which could be the next big US silver producing mine. You know, when I look at stories like Viscount, which could be one of the largest silver mines, I'm also looking at what could be the next big gold mine, you know, marquee mine, more than seven to eight million ounces of gold, maybe 10 million ounces of gold, if Eric Sprott is right. Well, this week, uh, Free Gold Ventures, which investors have been waiting for a long time, uh, you know, remember there's been a lot of the drill assays have taken a while to get some of these results back, especially, uh, you know, uh, during, the, during the COVID, uh, there's not a lot of workers and it's hard to find, get the assays back on time, but we're finally beginning to get drill results back. Free Gold intercepted 2.67 gram per ton over 93.6 meters. This is very good and this includes a high grade um, within it. So we're beginning to get that high grade again uh, that we haven't seen uh, since last May when the stock skyrocketed. Remember there's now four drill rigs turning. The two holes here were approximately 500 meters apart. So this could be pretty big. So the 2021 drilling program is currently underway with three drill rigs. And the crew for the fourth drill rig is slated to arrive uh, imminently. So look at the high grade here. And this is known to be a big system here. Uh, and now they're beginning to find the high grade. Last year, in May 2020, they returned that 188 meters of 3.69 grams per ton gold. This really is what got the market going here. Uh, so 188 meters of 3.69, 93.6 of 2.67. So uh, not as good as the May result, but we're getting there. And there's four drill rigs turning, and they're continuing to hit. Uh, and they're beginning to find the higher grade component. Uh, and they're just beginning to start telling the story. If you can get more information, you can call this CEO, 604 6 Six two seven three zero seven. You can also email her at jkw at freegoldventures.com. But again, some of the top results in the junior mining sector, but have been quite ignored right here in the USA, uh, Fairbanks District, uh, right near the Kinross Mine, and the, the producing Pogo Mine for Northern Star, the, some of the two best top U.S. gold mines. And now, um, the Free Gold Ventures team led by Alvin jo Jackson and Christina Walcott are hitting the higher grade component of this huge low grade system, the higher grade feeder of what, what of this huge low grade system. So quite exciting for drill rigs turning. Hopefully this is just the start of news beginning to trickle in here. One story that I've been highlighting for a couple of years now is Roscan Gold, which can be traded as ROS on the TSX Venture and as RCGCF. They came out with results in January, 30 meters at 2.96 grams per ton. This starts from surface. Uh, so you're getting good high grade, thick at surface. Uh, very, uh, very good results coming from Roscan. The chairman um, Sam Jonah just bought a significant amount of shares. And what's going on here is that they're beginning to demonstrate that this magnetic structure in the corridor, 22 kilometers uh, with this newly, from, the, from the newly acquired uh, Mankuki West District, uh, 
this seems to be a huge trend that they're beginning to discover here. Uh, this re is remains open. Uh, it's they hit their deepest intercept to depth. Uh, so this really is beginning to show here, um, especially if you take a look at the diagrams here, the size potential of these targets here, and it's getting much, much bigger what they're discovering than they realize. That's why you're seeing the insider buying. That's why you're seeing the old Ashanti guys coming in here, because they're beginning to see the makings of what could be another major marquee mine. I would not be surprised if this becomes one of the top takeout targets in Mali and West Africa. Remember, they are surrounded by major mines there, the major mining companies like B2 Gold, uh, IM Gold. Uh, so I really expect, and with the people that are involved here, um, that this could be a takeout target. Person to contact for corporate development, if you want to get information, is Dr. Uh, Andrew Ramcharan, engineer. Phone number is 416-572-2295. His email is aramcharan at roscan.ca. Maybe you can reach out and see if he can help explain to help understand the potential here. Uh, and that might help investors see why there's been so much insider buying uh, going on here and so many of these smart investors getting involved. Another one of our companies that are one of our top ones is StrikePoint Gold which can be traded as SKP on the TSX Venture and as STKXF. Uh, and they just were able to identify a new high-grade discovery. Uh, they intersected massive sul sulfide 10 grams over 7.72 7 meters of the Willoughby project. And what this is showing that, there, that this may show similar, similarities to some of the other major gold deposits in the area. This company has a very strong treasury. Uh, they're showing success of exploration at the high grade silver, at their high grade quarter silver property. They also have this Willoughby gold silver property. Uh, and they believe that they're gonna be one of the top uh, discovery stories in the Golden Triangle. Uh, very top technical team. Um, Projects are uh, potentially very big. Remember, this was a $4 stock uh, back in the last bull cycle. And uh, we're expecting a lot more news now, especially with a strong treasury, um, very top technical team, and some of the highest grades in the Golden Triangle. person to speak to at StrikePoint Gold is Sean Kunkin, CEO. Phone number is 604-602-1440. Uh, SK at strikepointgold.com. But again, um, they've had some very good results recently uh, from both the Willoughby and their high grade silver property, uh, but have not yet uh, been fully recognized yet by the market. So here's another story that's coming out with great results with a strong treasury uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a very exciting exploration program that may be overlooked. You can tell when companies start com coming back with drill results, very good drill results, and investors sell into that, that we're still in a correction, but this is one story that you should be paying attention to because they came starting to get results back and now they're beginning to find a very large high-grade system also in the Golden Triangle. Uh, and this is uh, the summer, the time when we begin to see a lot of the news begin to come back with the Golden Triangle uh, stories. Uh, they intersected this week. Uh, some very good intercepts here, polymetallic, gold, silver, copper. Uh, but more, they... They are seeing a large-scale uh, gold-copper porphyry system, uh, and this is right between 
in the heart of the major uh, major mines like uh, Sea Bridges around there, uh, uh, Bruce Jack, uh, and most of the focus has been on the near surface high grade gold, uh, and which is which is great, and they're continuing to find that, uh, but now they're beginning to find much larger scales. Uh, larger scale systems that indicate that there may be much, much bigger systems uh, at depth. Uh, and now they're beginning to see this gold copper porphyry potential, uh, which could be sort of a, a game changing for the company as it gets more interest from the majors. And they're located again right around the major deposits around them, KSM by uh, Seabridge, Iron Cap, Snowfields, Treaty Creek, to the two-door story, story, that's only located 50 kilometers to the southeast, and this market cap is below 40 million. Some of these companies that have drilled these deeper holes and have come up with these huge uh, porphyry systems and have proven it out um, have market caps of over a uh, billion dollars. So. Uh, a story, it has been, uh, it seems to be a, a seller that wanted to get out, but beginning to just get drill results, the CEO said that they were delayed considerably, and now they're beginning to get results, and they have m four major target areas that they hope to uh, come, you know, uh, hope to, to report to their shareholders into the market in the next coming weeks. So stay tuned to Gold Stock Trade. I know it's been a slow six, seven months, especially for the gold sector, but we had an incredible summer. We expect another leg higher, uh, and we're hopefully towards the end of this consolidation. Uh, it's been a long time, uh, seven months, but we moved back to the 200 day moving average, and hopefully this is a time where we'll see some support come in. So stay tuned to goldstocktrades.com. Thank you for your support.